supposed to be a little stop button up here. Oh, all right. I guess it means it's time to reboot the computer. Uh, anyway, so I assume that's going fine. So let me start, and, and really nothing would make me happier than for you to keep me going the whole period, is to answer your questions. Yes? I split it. Um, to log into the server with terminal, is it this SSH and then your username at jaguar.csvchigo.edu? That's correct. So to log into Jaguar or any other Unix Linux system on the planet, SSH, your ID at Jaguar. And if you are not on the campus Wi Fi, then you have to be sure and tell them what part of the universe you're talking about, which is csuchico.edu. Okay. SSH just stands for secure shell. Uh, all right. I think, didn't I already characterize this funny thing that gives us a little prompt and accepts our keystrokes as a shell? Did I use that term before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's why the, where the term comes from, secure shell. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Uh, you're not required to put T. Gibson at. If you don't put T. Gibson at, then it's going to assume it, a login ID equivalent to what you see when you type ID, which in my case is T. Gibson. So it's, when I do it, you frequently don't see me do it. Uh, unless you've engineered it to be precisely the same on Jaguar in your own computer, which I've done, then they're likely going to be different. So when in doubt, just your ID at, and away you go. Yes? What about for those of us who don't have a Jaguar account set up yet? Uh, for those of you who don't have a Jaguar account set up yet, and that's certainly uh, one of the disadvantages of being on the wait list, hopefully to be resolved in the next 24 hours, then... Uh, your next bet is just to have your some version of Linux that you have access to, whether that's through a virtual machine, a dual boot, or if you have OS X, then you're set as well. Other questions? Yes? Um, All right, for installing it on the Mac, let's see here. So if I look under installing Linux, which is also my dumping ground for G++ on your Mac, uh, you are talking about this stuff here? Yeah. And you're saying when you do Xcode select it says command not found? Mm -hmm. Okay, then what you need to do is install Xcode. So I believe you'll see that on the App Store. It should be a free download. Uh, no spaces, xcode, xcode, and that will in, that will install a, a, a suite of development tools on your machine. The one thing it doesn't install is some of the stuff that you do at the command line, and so that's what number three is having you do, kind of taking that last step to get that stuff going. Other questions? Yes. I'm having problems uh, with the command tools after installing xcode. You're having trouble with the command tools. Uh, what kind of trouble? Um, they're not installed. Uh, so what, this this one right here? Yeah. And uh, do you go, does it give you a dialog, and what does it do when you type that in? Um, it says to install, and then I press it, and then it says you can't find the update. Can't find the update? Yeah. And when I do Xcode print, it just says it has the developer, not the um, are you running the latest version of OS X? Yeah. Uh, is it a laptop? Yeah. Uh, why don't you bring it to my office hours or something like that? We'll see if we can figure out the issue. Other questions? Yes? I'm trying to compile uh, Hello World 
program, it says T out is not name and type. Trying to compile hello world says so Ciet is not name and type. All right, so what's today's date? Twenty seventh. Make the Uh, it depends what you're doing. I'm not sure what exactly is causing your error, but let's see what happens if I try to. Whoops! Let's not try to compile that. All right, so it's not an undeclared identifier. So. Uh, if you recall, you have a number of ways of accessing previous commands you typed. If you type an exclamation point in one or more characters, it's going to run the most recent command that you were running that began with that one or more characters. So in here, looking at my quick turnaround here, uh, I edited this program, then I edited it again. So here it is showing the command it's running. And then I typed in G++, hello dot CPP and then and I didn't like it so I edited it and then I tried compiling it again didn't like it so I edited it tried compiling it again and I'm going to edit it again um, all right well the program's small enough can you tell me what you have going here do you have using namespace standard uh, yeah. like that Okay, what do you have in here? Tell me what you're doing with C out. Um, space, less than, less than, space, in quotations, hello, one more, and then space, less than, less than, space. Do you have a, do you have a closing quote in there? Yeah. End, L. End line, like that. That'll work. That's exactly what you have. Backslash n. Say that again? What about backslash n? Yeah. What about it? It's like. Uh, well, ENDL is. It's n. Yeah, yeah. Semicolon. You're the semicolon ends the line. Um, I don't know if that's exactly what you. Yeah, there there's got to be some additional character in there or something. Mm. Main, no, in main you don't. I don't know, I can try. All right, I don't, uh, I'm unable to reproduce your error, so I'm happy to look at that exactly. Um, and I can certainly talk more about some of the general structure of the program and stuff. But other questions, yeah. Won't let you download it. What does it say? Uh, so you need to update your operating system then on your. And it doesn't want you to. All right, uh, you're then another one of my office hour victims. <laughs> that you, you'll have to bring it, and we'll we'll either get you upgraded or we will find an older version of Xcode for you. Yes. I can't move, uh, move between lines even if I uh, press I. In, inside of Vim moving between lines? Yeah. Well, you have to make sure you're in command mode, so you don't want to press I. So I, if I'm not unsure, if I'm ever unsure of the mode I'm in, just hit escape. That'll put me in command mode. And the letter K, K is what's taking me up each time. J is taking me down. J for down and K for up. <clears throat> I did post in the Piazza, I did post a message about Vim Tutor, but in case you didn't see that, uh, might be worth everyone's while to spend half an hour, an hour with this tutorial. Vim Tutor, one word, if I type it and hit return, 
and it actually on a normal I've got everything blown up so it's not paging right but actually it will show enough on the screen that you can actually even if you knew nothing at all about Vim you'd be able to start doing it um, so I would I'd recommend folks do that other questions mm-hmm If I have hundred, if I have hundreds of lines of code, so let me copy this file here, and this file is how many lines of code is that? It isn't code, but it's lines. Eighty-six lines. All right. Um, there now it's one hundred, eight hundred and sixty lines. So if I want to get to the bottom of the file, G is bottom of file. And re these are all in command mode, right? So if I'm in insert mode, I see one of those. If I'm in command mode and I do uppercase G, that takes me to the bottom. And top. Um, you can type colon and a number, for example. Colon 45 takes me to line 45, so I can try that right now. Colon, you see that whenever you do the colon commands, it jumps you down to the bottom of the screen. 45, there we go. And then finally, uh, control F is forward a screen, and control B is backward a screen. Control F, Control F, Control F, Control F, Control B, 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 B. Other questions? When you shush and you connect, how do you unconnect? I like that you call it shush. You mean SSH? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to call it shush. I like that better. Uh, so, I'm sorry, I got wrapped up in the pronunciation. So, what's the question? Oh, how do you exit out of it? Uh, actually, the word exit will do it. So that there, SSH Jaguar, Shush Jaguar. And then uh, I can either type exit or another way is, um, oops. Uh, if you type Control D, D is in dog, Control D will exit me out as well. That also goes for, there is a question on Piazza, which I think, bears bringing up again about uh, your program never stopping. So if I do that, oops, hang on. All right, if I, if I run my program, note that I'm not getting my prompt back. My program's actually running right now. It's in an infinite loop and there's no way it's never going to end on its own. So if you ever get in a situation where you want to interrupt the program and tell it to stop, it's Control C. And you actually see the little Control C character I typed there, and that'll break you out. Okay? Yes? Would a header fail command work on uh, trying to find like the code? Does that work the same way as down? Uh, will header tail find the? I don't know what you mean by find the code. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I know what the commands are, but you're just talking about as a strategy for looking at the contents of files. Oh, yeah, sure. So we're, we're I don't want to get too far into that right now, but there, the shell has hundreds and hundreds of commands you can type, and one of them is is uh, head, and another one's tail. If I type head, this password file, it gives me the head or the top of the file, and if I type tail, it's going to give me the bottom of the file the top 10 lines, bottom 10 lines. You can put in an option to see the top 100 lines. Um, so the answer is yes, you can do that. But it isn't the same as being in an editor because all you're doing is seeing the contents of the file. By seeing the contents of the file, that's not the same as being able to change the contents of the file, right? So if you wanted to change it, then you'd have to get into something like Vim to actually edit it. Um, but yeah. Other questions? Questions about C itself, the structure of the. Yes? Actually, I'll have to do the class. Do you do a magic word only? 
I haven't done it, but thanks for reminding me. So uh, let's do the magic word right now. Are you ready? Today's magic word is hexagon. Heard a couple smirks. Only, only. Uh, Some people did complete it, yes. But now you now you ruined the mystery because half the class has half the class knows exactly what I mean by saying hexagon. The other half of the class doesn't know. I was just hoping to go on with the line that that talk of polygons really riles up this crowd. But yeah. can you write it as how you write it? Uh, it is not case or? sensitive. It's not case sensitive. Write it any way you like. As long as the letters are correct. Okay. Questions about C itself. Yes? What exactly is the iOS string at the very top of the main string? Okay. Uh, we, we'll revisit these as the semester goes on. Uh, so I, I'll just give kind of a light description and I'll give you a real detailed description later on. Uh, this is, if you want me to use correct terminology from the perspective of a, a pro C++ programmer, I would call this a preprocessor directive. <clears throat> uh, however, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sit around the, the water cooler saying, hey, how's that preprocessor directive going? I'd just say, uh, yes, that's a pound include. That's what everyone calls it. They just call it a pound include. Um, it actually means literally what it sounds like. It is going to include a copy of a file right at this point. And there actually is a file out there called iostream. You could find it, you could open it up, you could look at it. So this particular preprocessor directive simply means find that file and put a copy of it right there. That file is probably 10,000 lines long. There are 10,000 lines being shoved right there before it hits the next line that you wrote. Okay. Uh, as far as why would I do that, uh, one thing that I'm going to be saying over and over and over again is before you are allowed to use it, you have to tell the compiler what it is. And what this file does is it describes input and output in C++. So if I don't have this file, if I have it commented out, then this line will not work because the compiler doesn't have the slightest idea what C out is. Okay. Yes. Is svio.h exclusive for C, or can we use it interchangeably with C++? So the question is whether standard io.h is uh, exclusive to C, or can we use it in C++? If you were a C programmer in writing a Hello World program, you would use, uh, I would call that standard io.h. Um, this provides the functionality for you to do input and output in the C language. Uh, to answer the question, absolutely anything you can do in C, you can also do in C++. So you could use all the C style input and output. Uh, I'm going to, except for the small bits of the course where I kind of focus on C, I'm not going to talk about that at all. But yes, you could get away with using it. All right, so that this is going to put a copy of a file right here, or a copy, yeah, that's the correct way of saying it. Uh, and the reason is it, it is describing to the compiler, again, this is the G++ is the compiler, right? Yeah. And so it's a finicky beast. You've seen, you've tried compiling things, and it's ready to complain at the drop of a hat, and uh, it'll definitely complain about C out, and incidentally about end line here at the end if you haven't included IO stream. So that's what that's doing is keeping G++ happy. The next is what does this mean using namespace standard? Um, I'm not required to put that in there. Uh, a namespace, how do I want to describe a namespace? A namespace is merely a label that's attached to something. And in this case, there are all sorts of things that are standard to C++. Uh, and so what they do is they give them all the same label called standard. So it, I don't have to put that there, but that then means if I use anything, any of the standard tools in the language, I have to prepend it with a little bit of code. So I would have to do this. 
Now, we'll, later in the semester, we'll learn a bit more about the significance of the two colons here, but the way you can look at it now is I'm merely saying that C out belongs to the standard namespace and that end line belongs to the standard namespace. If I don't do that, as I recall, um, the compiler gives a little bit of an informative error. So I commented out that saying that I'm using this explicitly, if I try compiling it, Yeah, so use of undeclared identifier, it's saying I don't have the slightest idea of what you're talking about. Did you mean standard C out, right? The C out that's in the standard library. So if I'm using a lot of the standard tools, it's just simply a shorthand for me to do that. If I don't put that in there, I would have to do this a whole bunch. Uh, I will, I'll actually, to kind of bring it home, I'll be going back and forth through the semester. There'll be several times where I won't do that, and I'll start explicitly naming uh, listing the namespace that all these things belong to. Other and then other questions. All right. Um, any confusion about this thing here? In. Int. Uh, so for those that have done at least a modicum of reading, int means integer. integer. Right. And what's a little bit perplexing is seeing that before the word main. Okay. So let me uh, start by saying that any application that you write, whether it's a 10-line Hello World program or millions of lines of code for the Mars rover, there's going to be one and exactly one function named main. It's just there has to be some common way of telling the computer, hey, this is where my program starts. And they decided that something M-A-I-N is where everything starts. Okay, So that's why I have that. Um, what specifies the beginning of main and the end of main? That would be these sets of curly braces. Uh, this, These parentheses, I will talk a bit more. In, uh, let me talk a bit more about it now. Um, so in, I, I don't, I'm not going to take the time to pull my drawing tablet out. Um, so when you're in various mathematics courses, they throw out functions, and they look something like that, where they say f of x is x squared, right? Hmm? Yes? OK. And so if I was to say, what is the answer to that? 9, right? OK. Uh, I, could even do, I could even do something like this. So if I did this, then what's the answer? 11, right? Not a lot of mystery there? Okay. That's what a, a function is in C++. You can think of it as uh, same as mathematical functions, and there are exactly three, as far as programmers are concerned, there are three characteristics to each of these functions. One is the name. Here the name of the function is f. Here the name of the, well, yeah, here the name of the function is f. The next is the parameters to the function, or the arguments, depending on the term you use. So this one has two parameters, x and y. And then whatever that function returns. Now, what I don't have in the mathematics version here, which is of paramount importance to C++ programming, is the kind of thing. And so it isn't enough in C++, it isn't enough to say that I have a function f that takes x and y. I have to say what kind of thing x is and what kind of thing y is. And in my little example here, x and y are integers, meaning that there's no uh, decimal fractional portion of it. So, and, and then finally, I also have to specify the kind of thing that the function gives back to me. And so it's intuitively obvious to look at this, but I provide this with two separate integers, and what kind of thing is it going to return back to me? Another integer, right? So if I was to write this function in C++ terms, 
I would say that I have a function called f. It's going to give back to me an integer. In our example down here, if I passed in 3 and 2, I'd get 11. Uh, and then it's going to take an integer called x, and it's going to take an integer called y. Now I specify what that function does inside the curly braces. So the curly braces are what denote the beginning and end of that. What I'll do is I'll put that right here and kind of comment it out. I can have anywhere from 0 to 1 million, some fake number like that, number of lines in here. Okay. It's, it's a black box, meaning that if I'm using the function, I don't necessarily know what's happening inside of it. But there is one thing that I do know, and I know exactly what kind of thing is going to be given back to me. And in this case, it's an integer. That's what this is specifying here. And that's what this return statement is specifying. So let's see, what's my formula? x squared plus y. So I can say x times x plus, plus y. Okay, remember I made the statement before I'm allowed before I'm allowed to use it, the compiler has to know what it is. When the compiler is, is reading your code, it's reading from the top to the bottom. So if here I say that I want to print out f of 3 comma 2, and maybe I'll put an end line in there. It's not going to, well, let me try it. Okay, here it is. It's complaining. It's saying, I don't, on line, first let's talk about errors for a moment. This is the file where it had a problem. This is the line number. So that first number is what you're usually concerned with. This is the column number. This is less informative, but if I was to start counting here, this green carrot would be on the 11th column. Anyway, the first number is what, what you're most interested in is there's a problem on line 7. The problem is, is it's using, it's calling this an undeclared identifier, which simply means that you have not told G++ what it is, and it doesn't know. It's undefined. Okay? You have to tell the compiler what it is before you use it. So the solution to my little poser is what I have to do is move this function above main. Now when the compiler is reading from top to bottom, it's going, aha, uh -huh, okay, you've got something called f that takes two integers, and it gives me an integer back, and it does dot da 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 So if, should I decide to use it, I'm not under any obligation to, but should I decide to use it, now I know how it's used. And now when it hits line 14, it should be happy. And we will try that. No complaint. And there it is, uh, the 11. And then I still have my loop in there that I have to control C out. Okay. So that is the, the general format for a function, which now lets me describe main. Main is just an, a function like any other. However, it's a little bit special in that it always designates where your program is going to begin. So note that your program doesn't begin at the top of the file. Your program begins wherever main is. Yeah. You're going to spit, this is saying you're going to spit stuff out to the screen, and what you're going to spit out there is whatever this function is giving you. And then I'm going to print a blank line at the end. Hello world, there's my infinite loop. I will comment that out so it plagues me no longer. I mentioned that you could have as many lines in here as you want. So let's try. Again, I mentioned note-taking techniques. If a portion of this was particularly interesting to you, you'd write 135 down. I just want to put, drive these things into the ground. Uh, let me try a different version of this function. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually make a different function. I'll call it g. Um, but it's going to do, it's going to produce the same result as what f did. So you can see it returns an integer and it takes two integers. And I'm going to say, I'm going to create an integer in here and I'm going to call it answer. 
And I'm going to say that answer is equal to, <clears throat> all right, let me create a couple. Let me create a variable called square. And then let me create a variable called answer. All right, what am I going to do here? I'm going to say that square, I want that to be equal to x times x. And then I want answer to be equal to, answer is equal to y plus square. And then how do I need to finish the function? Return. Uh, how about this? Yes? Um, in Java, you can put like, since you have two uh, integers, you can put like integer squared and comma answer. Can you do that in C plus plus two or get that one? Right, so the, the question is that Java has some flexibility for uh, describing the existence of these variables. Uh, for instance, in Java, you can do this instead, and then I wouldn't have to do that at all. And the answer is yes, that is absolutely correct C++ as well. Okay. I'll go ahead and leave it this way. So what I've done is I've taken what I, is easily done in a single step and what a fluent programmer would do in a single step, and I've broken it down into a bunch of separate steps just to show you that it really is arbitrary what you do in here. Uh, when I'm calling this function here, I have, you know, I, it, as far as line 21 is concerned, it doesn't have the slightest idea what f is doing. The only thing it knows is that f is going to give it an integer back. So you can do whatever you want in there. You can have a bunch of C out statements. You can have a bunch of loops. At the end of the day, all this is concerned about is what's given back. Yes? You're missing a semicolon at the end of line 14. There you go. Thank you. All right. Uh, the names, I, I would actually discourage these names that are favored by mathematicians of single letters. Uh, usually something that contains my name is what I like, something like this. Okay, so you're welcome to use uh, any name you like. I recommend that you put in my name because re realize that I do grade this. So, <clears throat> that's right, that's where Vim comes in, right? You learn some commands. If I want to call this function, what I do is I make a copy of it, I put it down here, and there we go. All right. So, try and do that in three keystrokes or so. All right. What do I have going on here? Let me get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that, that. This isn't called F anymore. I will call that Todd's cool function. I'll paste that and I'll do this and I'll do one of those and one of these and everyone likes when I say that. All right. So all I'm doing is I'm calling uh, these two functions and I'm passing them the same information and even though they do them in different ways, they should come up with the same answer. And they both come up with 11, so that works. Any, any questions about like line 13 or line 15, what exactly I'm doing? Is there any confusion or questions about that? I'm just merely creating a placeholder to put information variable in the same sense as uh, mathematical variables, right? It's just a placeholder for information. The thing about C++, and this isn't true of all programming languages, uh, but in C++ it's really finicky about what kind of thing your variables are. So I do have to say whether it's an integer or a different type. We can talk just a moment about some of the different types. We have um, float. So again, that can be called whatever you want. Uh, float, again, holds a number that includes a fraction. 
So let's actually test that a little bit. After hello world, I'll create a float. I'm just going to call it FL. I'm going to say that FL is equal to 3.14, and I'm going to create an integer i, and I'm going to say that i is equal to 3.14. And then I'm going to say C out FL has, and then I'll print FL there. And I'll do the same thing, except I'll say i has, and I'll print out i. Okay. 3.14, 3.14, one's an integer, one's a float. Whoops. Oh, I see it doesn't like that I'm being a little bit. It's giving me a warning saying, hey, you're probably not wanting to do that. And the reason I'm probably not wanting to do that is that if I've got FL as a float kind of variable, it preserves this fractional information. If it's an integer, it doesn't preserve it. Now note that it isn't sophisticated by any means. Let me change this number to 3.99. Okay, note that it didn't round up to 4. An integer literally just simply discards that fractional portion. So for those who have not started on the next assignment and you got to the quotient part where you have to divide two integers and you try dividing you know, 5 into 11 or something like that, and, and you're, all you're getting is a whole number, that's why. Okay. Uh, two more types for you real quick. Char, that's just shorthand for a character. <clears throat> character is any single character in single quotes. And the last one I'll give you is string, and that is any number of characters in double quotes, or numbers, right? Any, any sort of alphanumeric. Is a double a float? Is a double a float? Yeah, so if you, if you read enough, you'll see things like double as well. Double just means a, a really large float. So there are limitations to these numbers, how large they can be, if you need additional precision. Uh, beyond the decimal point, then you'd choose double over float. So float only does two decimal places past. Two places past the decimal point. No, no, no. It, it does. I don't. I don't remember. It depends on the machine, but it's it's many decimal places past. But double does twice as much. Double does twice as much. Yeah. <coughs> it, it has to do with the memory, right? Memory that's allocated. Anyway. Yeah. So what it what it, it depends on uh, it. Yeah, there are two aspects at play. One, it, one would be the architecture of your machines. So up until fairly recently, machines were called 32-bit machines, which 32 bits is 4 bytes, so a float would normally be 4 bytes. Now everything's 64-bit machines. Floats are going to be 8 bytes, twice as large, and then a double is going to be twice that, 16 bytes. So yeah, so they take more memory, but they're more precise. Um, Yes. Can you like uh, equal it as a number, not as a letter? Can you make it equal to a number? Yeah. So it's it's. Uh, if I was to to do it, I would say ch equals, and I'd put the five in single quotes. Let me come back to that in just a moment. Let me talk about this for a moment. <clears throat> You'll notice that. Some of these are in green. What these mean is that there are reserved words in the language. I think, do I get that if I say while? OK, so uh, it's either going to be, the green means that it's a built-in type as part of the language. If it's in orange, it's a reserved word. Note that string is just in this plain black text, like everything else. So that means that string is actually not built into the language. It's something that is for lack of a better term, bolted on after the fact. So in order, and that's the same for C out. So note that C out is not intrinsically part of the language like FLOAT is. In order for me to use C out, I have to tell it to get a copy of this file. To work with strings, there's a file nicely called string that you actually have to include so that it knows how to use strings. Now it is in the standard library, so uh, this kind of stuff is still necessary as well for strings. Uh, 
Finally, with uh, char characters, let me first let me make sure I don't have any bugs here. So yeah, I'm gonna comment out. I'm just gonna say that. All right. Um, This is a rabbit hole I don't want to get too far down. But let me suffice to say that internally, characters are represented with numbers. So the letter T, anyone know what the letter T is? Or not letter T, no, anyone know what the uppercase A's number is? 30-something uh, would be a space. Uh, let's try. CH equals 65. Note that I do not have any single quotes around it. I also have two characters here. So this means the number 65 CH is, if I use 65 and I run it, CH is A. Let me try 66. Any guesses? Mm-hmm. B. If I jump ahead a ways, 97. Note that lowercase letters are different than uppercase letters. So there's actually a numeric code for every glyph on your keyboard. And so <clears throat> when you're doing this, make sure that you want the code 5 that corresponds to the fifth glyph, for back, lack of a better term, on your keyboard, rather than I want the character 5 stored in that variable. Now, if it's a number and you want to do math on it, probably best not to put it in a char, but put it in like an integer, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, you actually can add to it. So I can say uh, CH equals 65, 65 uh, CH plus 3, and that would be like the letter C, right? Or the letter D. <clears throat> um, if I try to put more than one character in here with the single quotes, I should get an error. All right. Let me talk a little bit about errors when you're compiling. You will do things that generate 30 errors. If that happens, always what you should always do is take your window and just scroll it all the way back up to the very first error. Just look at the very first error and ignore every other error. Because oftentimes what happens is that first error just causes additional problems to propagate. And when you fix that first thing, most of the problems are going to go away. So whenever you're trying to figure out your programs, always just look at the first error. All right. And the very last thing that I'll finish with on actually compiling, I have put the, uh, I think I explained it briefly with the dash O option. Whatever text you put after the dash O means that is what your executable is going to be called. Oops, I don't have anything called. What did I call it? Hello? Uh, so there is my executable called hello there. That's what goes after the dash O. You may have noticed me compiling sometimes without the dash O. You're certainly welcome to leave that off. What that does is it comes up with a name for you if you've not provided one yourself, and that name is always a.out for historical reasons. And then finally, to run it, you want to run it in your current directory, slash, and then the name of the file. Okay? So with that, we'll see you in lab.